Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to retrieve data stored in an XML file. In this video we will examine a simple scenario involving an XML file. A country club currently has all its member data stored in an XML file, like the one shown here. This file is just a sample and stores data of about three members only. For each member, the file stores four pieces of information. The type is either family or single. The level is either gold, silver, or bronze. The file also stores the member's surname and the year they joined. Note that type and level are stored as attributes, while surname and joined are stored in nodes. The country club wants to produce an Excel file based on this data. This video will explain the intermediate step, namely, how to populate a list of members in Automation Studio. Once they have such a list, they will be able to go ahead and populate an Excel file or perform any other operation on the data they might need. Before we start, let's look at an outline of the approach we will follow. Just to review, Automation Studio provides three types of XML objects, the XML document, XML element, and XML node. These types form a hierarchy where an XML document includes an XML element which in turn includes one or more XML nodes. The XML nodes can in turn include other nodes that we will call sub-nodes. First, we will load the entire XML file into an XML document variable. We will then extract the root node from the XML document into an XML element variable. Next, we will extract the member nodes of the XML element and store them in a list of XML nodes. Finally, we will read the data from each XML node to populate a member variable in a list of members. Our first step is to load the XML data into the project. Specifically, we will populate an XML document variable with the contents of our XML file. We will use the load XML file method of the XML document variable. Create a new complex variable of type XML document. Select complex variable. Select XML. Select XML document. Click Next. Call the variable XML doc. Click Finish. Save the project. Add a step to the workflow. Name it Load XML File. We will use the XML documents load from file method to populate that variable. Specify the location and name of the XML file to load data from. Save the project. Run the workflow. Let's inspect the contents of the XML doc variable. We can see that the XML doc variable stores the full contents of the XML file. Stop the project. The next step is to store the data in an XML element variable. In other words, we will now populate an XML element variable with the root element of the XML file. We will use the getDocumentElement method of the XML document variable. Create a new complex variable of type XML element. Name the variable XML element. Add a step to the workflow to populate the XML element. Drag our new XML element variable into the builder area so we can assign it a value. We will use the XML document variables get document element method to populate the XML element.
Save the project. Run the workflow. Let's inspect the contents of the XML element variable. We can see that the XML element variable was populated with the data from the XML document without the initial XML header. Note that it contains multiple member nodes. Stop the project. The next step is to extract the member nodes from the XML element and store them in individual XML node variables. We will create a list of XML nodes. Each XML node will store one member node from the XML element. We will use the getChildNodes method of the XML element variable. Create a list variable of type XML node. Select list variable. Call the variable list of member nodes. Set type to complex. Choose XML node. Click Finish. Add a new workflow step to extract the member nodes. We want to populate our list of member nodes, so drag that list into the builder area. We want to populate the list using the nodes from the XML element variable. To do so, use the XML element variables get child nodes method. Save the project. Run the workflow. Let's inspect the contents of the list of member nodes. We can immediately see that there are three elements in the list, as we expected. We see that the first node contains all the details about the first member. The second node stores all the details about the second member. Stop the project. Before we start populating our list of members, we need to create a member variable type as well as some other variables. We will start by creating the user-defined type called member with four properties to store the four pieces of information we have about each member. Click to open the menu. Click user-defined type. Click create new type. Call the type member. Click add property to add the first property to this type. Call this property level. Add the other three properties we need. Click save. Close the types window. Now create a list of member types. This is the list we ultimately want to populate. Call the list, list of members. Set type to complex variable. Select the member type we just created. Click finish. We now need to create two additional variables that we will use to store data temporarily. You will see why these are needed shortly. First, create a member variable called temp member. Now create a variable of type XML node and call it temp node.
we now have all the variables we will need so that we can populate our list of members. At this point, we have a list of XML nodes, as shown here. We want to use the data in this list to populate a list of members. If we look at each node, we can see that it stores two attributes, namely type and level, and two nodes, namely surname and joined. We will see that the process for extracting data from attributes and from nodes is slightly different. Add a workflow step to populate the list of members. The process of populating the list involves iterating through the list of nodes in our list of member nodes. To do that, we need to use a for each statement from the common statements group. We need to specify which list to iterate through. Select the list of member nodes. We will first add instructions to extract the first attribute, namely level. We want to retrieve the value of the level attribute. To do that, we will use the getAttributeByName method of the XML node. That will give us another XML node that includes only that attribute. We will then use the getInnerText method to retrieve the actual value. We will store the level attribute in the XML node we created earlier, temp node. Drag temp node into the builder area. We will use the getAttribute method of the XML node of the current iteration to extract the level attribute. Type in the name of the attribute to retrieve, namely level. In the next step we will retrieve the actual value of the level attribute. We will store the value in the level property of the temp member variable we created earlier. Drag in the level property of the temp member variable. Set the value of this property using the getInnerText method of the temp node variable. Save the project. We will now add a step to add the temp member variable to the list of members list variable. Drag in the add element at end method of the list of members list variable. We might be tempted to specify the temp member variable in that parameter, but that would be incorrect because the resulting entry in the list would be forever linked to the value of that temp variable, which will change later. Instead, we must populate the parameter using a duplicate of the temp member variable. Select the duplicate function from the variable's built-in service. Now we can select the temp member variable. Save the project. Run the workflow. Let us inspect the list of members list variable. We see that our list includes three members, as we expected. Looking each member in our list, we can see that the level property is correctly populated. Follow the same pattern to add the other attribute, type, to the temp member variable, as shown here. We have now populated our temp member variable with the two attributes of the XML nodes. We want to retrieve the value of the surname sub node. To do that, we will use the select single node method of the XML node. That will give us another XML node that includes only the surname sub node. We will then use the getInnerText method to retrieve the actual value. We will add the actions for retrieving the surname value above the actions we added before, just to keep the visuals clear.
drag in the temp node variable. We will use the select single node method of the XML node of the current iteration to populate the temp node. Now we need to set the X path of the subnode we want to retrieve, which is simply surname. We now need to populate the surname property of the temp member variable, so drag that into the builder. Use the getInnerText method of temp node to retrieve the actual value of the surname node. Repeat the same procedure to retrieve the value of the join sub node as shown here. We are now ready to test the full solution. Run the workflow. Inspect the list of members variable. We can see that all four properties of each member in the list are now correctly populated. Stop the project. Thank you for watching.